Okay, hello everyone and welcome back to our podcast, Doorway to Discovery. Uh, my name is Ashlyn, my pronouns are she, her, and I work at Central in Community Engagement. Hi, welcome back everyone. Uh, my name is Erin, my pronouns are also she, her, and I work in the Children's and Adult Fiction Department at the Central Library. Hey everybody, I'm Kate, my pronouns are also she, her, and I am the Community Branches intern working at the Brooklyn Branch. Hi everyone, my name is Kylie, my pronouns are she, her, and I'm a branch assistant at the Roslyn branch. Hi everybody, my name is Shelby, my pronouns are also she, her, and I work at the Brooklyn branch as a branch assistant. Amazing. So last week we did a little bit of reader's advisory, but for this podcast, just to give you a little bit of context, what we're going to be doing is switching between reader's advisory and talking about our jobs so you can get a little behind the scenes action. So we are gonna go through just kind of what we all do in a day. It's obviously a little bit different right now because we're currently in lockdown, but as we will tell you about, we still have lots of services to offer you. So uh, Erin, do you wanna tell us about what you do in an average day? Oh, an average day. Oh, goodness gracious. Um, so it, like all of my days, one of the things I really love about my job actually is my days aren't the same every day. Um, and because I have a lot of different responsibilities, especially since I'm full time in my department, um, it thankfully gives me more to do. So I do um, a lot of stuff with book clubs because I run the fiction book club at the library. So there's a lot of, um, I get to pick all of the books that we do for the year. We get to order them all that kind of stuff. Um, I get to do a lot of partnerships with other areas. So um, I'm hopefully doing like a social media campaign with the person that does all of our PR right now, um, setting up for Black History Month. So that's something that I get to do. Um, us librarians do something <laughs> called weeding, which I think a lot of people haven't heard before. It's just like a fancy term of getting rid of um, things in the collection that we, we don't need anymore. So um, books that are really grubby or ripped or torn or they just don't look good anymore or things that are out of date or things that we have, you know, the new James Patterson from a year ago <laughs> where we have 15 copies. We don't need 15 copies anymore. Um, it's actually the librarian's job to go in and pull all those extras and take them out of the system. Um, and then we also run programs. So usually um, in our normal world, I would run the baby time program, which is like a baby story time. Um, but now a lot of our stuff has been gone online. So any other programs that we're running now, it's all virtual. So those are just a few of the things that I do day to day and read a lot of library magazines. <laughs> That's awesome. Just one or two things. Yeah, just, just a few. few. Not too busy. No. <laughs> what about you, Kate? Uh, so at the Brooklyn branch, uh, usually I start the day by making some contactless pickup appointments, packaging up uh, materials for patrons, and then I pull holds. So we get a big long list um, in the morning of all the titles that people have put on hold. Um, and so then often I'll go around and collect all of those. Some days it's a very long list. Um, last week, I think we had a list of like 250 titles. Um, so we split that one up because that's too much for me to do. Um, <laughs> so uh, that's how I spend the morning. And then usually in the afternoon, I'm um, either checking in or I uh, go down to the contactless pickup station. Um, and also sometimes I uh, work on the live chat service. Oh, so live chat. yes, Aaron too. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Shelby. Um, uh, so live chat is uh, we log on and then we answer all of your questions that you can put in on the website. Um, and other than that, I don't do much in the branch, um, but at home, I also have some work from home days and I am currently working on putting together the 1000 books before kindergarten program at the library. So this is a reading challenge that's going to encourage um, preschool kids to uh, read 1000 books 
yes, you can repeat books because that's too many if you couldn't. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so the goal is to read a thousand books before the child turns five or enters kindergarten. So currently I'm setting up that program on um, a platform called Read Squared, which is what we used for the TD Summer Reading Club and the other reading challenges that we have on offer. We're currently in the middle of the winter reading challenge, I believe. Um, and yeah, so that project is going to come out late January. So keep your eye out if you're interested, but that's mostly what I do. That's so cool. I'm really excited to see how the program goes. Thank you. I'm very excited too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. Kylie, do you want to tell us about your job? Sure. Um, so right now at Roslyn Branch, we're also doing contactless pickup. Um, so usual day is getting everything ready for contactless pickup, also pulling holds, um, checking in books when they uh, come to us through the courier. Um, I have also been um, working on um, some of the committees. Um, I'm on the TD Summer Reading Club Committee, so we're planning for the summer already. Um, and when we were in usual times, I would do one of the toddler time programs, but as is not the usual times anymore. Um, I'm working on virtual programs. So one that I'm mostly doing is the Great Create. Uh, so making lots of crafts, which has been a lot of fun. <laughs> I'm really enjoying doing those. And sometimes the occasional puppet show as well. <laughs> that was so cute, honestly, the it last the one best. you guys did. So it was cool. so Thank cute. you. <laughs> Caitlin was so excited at work when she was making her little reindeer. It was so adorable. <laughs> They were really yeah. fun. So yeah, keep your eye on our YouTube channel if you're interested in any uh, virtual programs. <laughs> Perfect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that is also a good time to mention that maybe you're listening to this podcast right now on an app, but you can also watch us on YouTube. If you prefer to see faces, then maybe when we're back open, you'll recognize some of us. <laughs> and when we're talking about books, we'll be throwing up the covers. So yeah, YouTube is great for us right now. <laughs> Shelby, do you want to tell us a bit? Yeah, I'll tell you a bit about my job. So um, one thing that I'd also kind of like to clarify since we're talking about it, um, in the library system, it's not common to have a full-time position. So a lot of us start out working um, a lot lower of hours. So Kylie and I are both uh, 21 hours. So we're only there three days out of the week, um, which makes our jobs a lot different different than say Aaron who's in there for, for like a full week. Um, we still get to do a lot of the same things but it does change the way we work just because of our availability. Um, but just like Kylie and Kate, um, I work at one of the branches so it runs pretty differently than Central does but we're doing contactless pickup where we have our appointments so I'm not gonna go over all of that again because you just heard it but um, I also do shelf audits uh, like the hold shelf audits. So whenever you put a book on hold, it sits on our shelf still. Um, and once a month, I have to go through and check that all of your holds are there because it's pretty common in libraries for books just to up and go missing. Just because we have so many of them, it's, it just happens. Like either we don't put it on the shelf in the right order or it's not in the alphabetical order or we put the wrong sticker on it. So I have to go through every month and make sure all of your holds are there. So if you're from Brooklyn, you've probably heard me recently call you to be like, hey, <laughs> do you have this book? Because right now we know we're checking them out. It's not you guys checking them out. So half the time it's just us not properly checking them out and they're with you at home. But it's always fun to go through and see everybody's holds on the shelf. I like looking at all the books and being like, oh, I want to read that one. Um, but I'm also doing uh, virtual programming. Usually during my regular time, I don't have a program that I'm always doing just because I was kind of new in my position before the lockdown, but we do story time. So we go on a rotation every six weeks. I would do a story time. Um, computer help. So if you wanted to learn how to use um, your computer, you can come in and book an appointment uh, during a regular everyday life uh, and I would help you learn how to use your computer but the one thing at branches is you spend a lot of time doing checking in and checking out at the front desk most of the time you spend for us at Brooklyn 
um, most of your shift up there um, and you get about two hours of off desk time if you're lucky to work on any kind of programming but most of the time you're on the floor with the public which is my favorite part like I really miss talking to people at the branches because you really start to get to know a lot of them so that's one thing I'm missing a lot of um, but one thing that I am going to pitch in is our uh, books for babies program uh, which when I was an intern last year was my program that I had to revisit Amp. And uh, because of the pandemic, we just weren't able to um, release it. So we're hoping that it will be turned into an online platform and accessible to you guys by the spring. So look for it in our March, February, March um, guide because it might be in there. We're still trying to figure out how to move it over. But I also started doing a makeup program virtually. So it's a live program. You can sign up for it through our online platform. And then you log into WebEx or Zoom, whichever one we're using. And then I do my makeup, talk about how I do my makeup, what products I'm using. And you can follow along at home and ask questions while you're doing it. If you know things aren't working for you, you can ask for other things you can do to help you. Um, and honestly, it's been probably one of my favorite things to come out of the pandemic because I get to go to work and do my makeup and <laughs> talk to people which is like my two favorite things in the world so and this I love this too because I get to see all of my friends that I don't get to see usually because we're closed so it's uh yeah it's fun yeah that's so cool I think we all find ourselves kind of doing things that we didn't expect to be doing I mean especially right now but even just you know given like what maybe people assume you do if you work in a library. And I think we get to do a lot of really cool stuff. Does anyone, has anyone ever got the question that drives me crazy? When someone's like, what do you do? Do you just read books all day? And I'm like, I wish, <laughs> no, like I have real work. Thank you so Wouldn't much. Wouldn't hate it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, be like, cool, no, you're mistaking me with publishing, sorry. <laughs> exactly, right. exactly. But even like my partner at home is like, you get to read all day. And I was like, what job do you think I have? I don't get to read all day. I don't, I'm not in a book club. If I was in a book club, I get to maybe read one. Like yeah. right now for this, I'm like, oh, I'm reading Queenie for work. <laughs> like, yeah, so no, my, mine doesn't understand either. Like people will ask him and he'll be like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what she, she talks about books a lot. Building in books. <laughs> Yes. Mm -hmm. Good job. Ashlyn, what about you? What's your usual day? Oh, my usual day is, I think it's a little bit, it's probably the most, uh, pick the odd one out because I barely touch books at all or like <gasps> work with them because I'm in community engagement. Not that the community doesn't love books. Um, <laughs> most of what I do is programs. Uh, so when I did this job before the pandemic. It was mostly working with kids because I worked in the summers. But right now I find that most of the programs I'm doing are with seniors, which has been a lot of fun. It's been really new for me, but I think it's been really cool to get to connect with our um, senior populations, especially right now. So we do a program where we call people by phone and we just kind of you know hang out and we pick a topic and talk about that I got to talk about Michelle Obama on the last one and nice. that was so much fun yep uh my next one I'm going to be talking about Hamilton so <gasps> amazing Kate is cool very time. Exciting, so <laughs> yeah <laughs> Kate should be a guest <laughs> yeah, yeah. So got, <laughs> <laughs> Kate just shows up she's like hey, we're talking about Hamilton <laughs> I'm your co-host today. <laughs> Alexander <Yeah>. Hamilton. Oh. <laughs> I still we were all just seen it. I'm so sorry. Yeah, Shelby too. Erin, uh, like I know. I keep. It. I've like I've gone to Netflix and been like, oh, or Disney Plus, sorry, and been like, I should watch this, and then I watch Beauty and the Beast again. So I'm sorry. That's fair. No, valid. Okay, but if you knew Erin, that is fair. Like you can't stop her from watching it. I'm looking it's at fair. my giant rose right now. <laughs> that's valid that's okay I do my best <laughs> yeah we have to <laughs> oh my gosh yeah um so yeah I do a lot of stuff with with seniors and a lot of community programming and one of the things I've got to do uh during this year or 
as well as last year was uh, work on this podcast so that's been a lot of fun and it's a great way to connect with uh, people so we hope you're enjoying listening to it or watching it okay <laughs> all right so uh, since this is also a bit of a reader's advisory podcast we are gonna tell you about what we're reading currently so right now I'm actually doing a reread of one of my favorite books of all time it's called Bear Town by Frederick Bachman. Um, <laughs> I am currently listening to it on Libby. So you can borrow audiobooks from us and download them right to your device. But Bear Town is an incredible book. It is about hockey culture in a small town in um, a Nordic country. I honestly can't remember which one. Are they in Sweden? I think yeah, that yeah. sounds right. Yeah, it's the sounds Kroner, pretty Swedish. right? That's their. Mm-hmm. It took me so long. I thought they were in America. Me too. And then I was <laughs> like, they said Kroner. It's too cold. And then they talked about their money, and I was like, oh, yeah. I thought it was slang. North America. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not. Yeah, um, it is amazing. It's really good. It's one of those books that has a really wide character cast and everyone is really well developed and everyone's story really flows into one another. And it's just very connected. I think we were talking about one of the books last week, I think that you were reading, Erin, we were talking about how things were so connected in it, kind of like that Crash movie, how like everything kind of goes into the other without realizing it. Yeah, so yeah. that's exactly so basically what anything Sarah J. Moss. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's Perfect. really good. There is also a sequel called uh, Us Against You, which is incredible. And Bachman is putting out a third. I have no idea when. It was a very vague letter that he posted, but I think sometime this year. But if you're into hockey, it's if you're into, you know developed characters and a lot of drama I would definitely go for this one yeah but uh what about you Erin perfect then oh okay so I am reading I am reading this monster called from blood and ash um so I'm still learning about the world but essentially it's about this girl named Poppy who is sort of um your quintessential chosen one She's known as the maiden. She's supposed to serve the gods. We still don't know what that means, um, (laughs) but that's what I know about her. And there are some characters that are like vampires, not vampires, and, you know, some attacks and some fights and some action and uh, some royal guards and all that kind of fun stuff in there. So, um, but I still have to read more, but so far, so far we're doing all right. It is. It did win the romance of of the year for 2020 for Goodreads. So I have high hopes. It, it for did. You. It did. And I won't lie to you guys. Um, I haven't got there yet, so I can't comment on the romance. But I'm hoping that it's really good. If it won a Goodreads award and it won um, over Beach Read, which was robbed. <laughs> it was so good. Beach Read, which I think I have. Oh yeah, hold on. Oh, that was convenient. Beach read. <laughs> there you go. That was so good. <laughs> that was one romance, um, in my opinion. But that's okay. Hopefully this one will bring the title home. So we'll see. Yeah. So I was just going to ask because I didn't expect there to be a lot of crossover with like genres, especially for the awards. I was really surprised when you said it won romance. I mean, I haven't read it. But do you find that happens a lot when you're looking for a romance book? You end up kind of with a fantasy? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, like, I can't speak for everybody else, but um, personally, definitely, which is interesting because, I mean, we could talk about this forever in terms of, like, how you classify something, like, Mm -hmm. genre-wise, a lot of, like, cross-classification, I guess, so it's kind of really hard to pinpoint some books in terms of where they belong. Um, I'm not saying that I disagree with it being classified as a fantasy, but I'm not not saying, or, sorry, as a romance, um, but I'm not not saying that either. Like if if it were up to me, which it's not, uh, but if it were, I would classify this as a fantasy novel for sure. Um, because I think if you are looking for a romance novel, especially like a historical or a contemporary, and you pick that up, I, I actually don't think you're going to be in, like it's not going to be what you want. 
I don't think it would be like when I was looking at it originally on Audible, um, I thought it was a fantasy. So when I it yeah, came it a romance, I was really confused because for me, a romance is it starts out as a love story and that's the main yeah. plot point. Like nothing else, like there are other things that are important, but the main thing that drives the plot is the love story. And yeah. that's not like I'm 120 pages into that one. And yeah. it, it was at the very beginning, I was like, oh, okay, like we're getting right into it, like they're meeting. It's going to happen. But then he goes away. Yeah. So I was like. (laughs) And yeah, I won't lie, you guys. I'm 300 pages, 380 pages into like a 600 page book. And I'm still waiting for the romance. So I wouldn't classify it as romance. I would say it's a romantic subplot. But that's just me. (laughs) Goodreads (laughs) didn't call me and ask me if I approved. So (laughs) they should really start doing that. They really Mm -hmm. should start doing that. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> so uh yeah actually I just finished a book this very morning um I was planning on only reading for like 15 minutes and then I read for longer because I was really close to the end um so I just finished um Confessions of the Fox by Jordi Rosenberg which was recommended to me by Ashlyn mm-hmm. and wow what a trip um <laughs> so this <laughs> book um speaking of genre-fying um who knows? It's kind of, it's mm-hmm. meta fiction. I guess it's kind of historical fiction. Um, the idea is that there is this fictional um, professor who finds uh, an 18th century manuscript um, that is supposedly the biography of Jack Shepard, the notorious London thief. But um, so not much is known about Jack Shepard and there are lots of like purported, you know, the most accurate biography of Jack Shepard, um, but no one really knows. So then this was a made up manuscript um, that is, uh, that reveals that Jack Shepard was trans and also that his, yeah, it's awesome. Love that. I know. And also that his partner in crime, Bess Khan, um, was not white. And like, so it adds in so much diversity to the history. And the author, um, Jordy Rosenberg, is himself um, a trans professor um, and uh, of, uh, what is it? It's 18th century um, literature and gender and sexuality studies. So, um, Obviously, he knows a lot about the subject, (laughs) Um, but the way the book is written is super cool because it's both the manuscript itself typed out and then the fictional professor's footnotes. So I'm like, I love that. It's uh, him providing like definitions for slang and stuff like that, but also you get to hear his whole backstory. (laughs) So for example, this is all one footnote. Oh, geez. Love that. Um, Because he's telling his own personal story. So it's really like a a fascinating read. Um, Very complicated, very like, um, it's really something you can dig your teeth into. Like there's a lot of like philosophy and like it's, it's, it's really interesting. So um, anyway, love this. It was a good one. But the next one I'm, well, I started it today I just read the introduction is Elemino P um, oh. which is um, a novel in letters yeah which is a pun because <laughs> it's both told L-M-N-O. yeah I did yeah. I read that one we can talk later oh okay did you not like it <laughs> um that's my favorite okay I was excited <laughs> because oh, no. um it's supposed to be like it's this town that um they're like really intense about literature and language is that right yeah it is so then they start they start redacting letters from their alphabet yeah so Um, the way to redact the letters is they essentially like there's like a literature god of sorts that they like worship and there's a statue and it like no word of a lie I didn't realize this was like a thing until halfway through the book because I wasn't paying attention I guess but the, the, the alphabet is on the statue and like one of the letters, let's say E falls off and they take this as a sign from the literature gods that they can't use the letter E anymore. Like in their writing, in their speech, 
beach, like everything. And you, if you do, like you essentially get like three strikes and then you get like kicked off the island. And then oh. like more letters oh. start to fall. So like, it's definitely like an interesting concept that way. So like, I you can't know, I'll give it that much. That's um, really cool. So you'll have yeah. to text finish it and we can chat. <laughs> Okay, yeah, because I saw a post about it on Instagram and I was like, okay, I need to read that now because then as it goes on, the author stops using the letters that fall yeah. off because it's all cool. told in letters. So I just started reading it, just read the introduction, enjoyed it. So we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Aaron, you and I will talk. <laughs> Perfect. Kelly, <laughs> do you want to tell us about what you're reading right now? Yes. Um, I don't have it with me because I'm at the library today and forgot to bring it, but I'm reading, um, rereading um, A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Maas in preparation for the newest book in the series coming out oh, mid-February. I have uh, a okay. friend. I'm like looking at my bookshelf trying to find it for you. <laughs> I know where it is. I just brought it home from the library because <laughs> it's on my kitchen table. <laughs> That's okay. Um, so yeah, I don't have a visual, but um great book it's a beauty and the beast retelling um so the main character Feyre she is um she's a hunter trying to provide for her family um and one day she kills a wolf and the wolf turns out to be um a fae and another fae comes to take her uh to the fairylands because that is the debt for killing a fae and so essentially the fae who comes to get her is the beast. She is Belle, and uh, the story proceeds from there. It is um, the first of a trilogy with a spin-off trilogy beginning in February. It's really, really good. Fantasy, there's great romance. It's one of those <laughs> fantasy romances. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's so good. There are so many um, like little strings little little breadcrumbs that are left for you to kind of find as you reread more and more and more and it's just really cool how she always brings the smallest things together to in in the end it's uh sarah j mass is just great so yeah court of She's thorns like and roses <laughs> that's a pretty popular one i think you'll find listeners on uh Very. this podcast <laughs> um yeah, we're sorry in advance <laughs> We'll work it into every conversation. We probably will. It's about to come up again. So it is. <laughs> so I'm the last one to go. You don't have to introduce me, but I'm also talking about a Sarah J. Mass uh, novel. It's Queen of Shadows, which is the fourth book in her Throne of Glass series. Um, I read the series fully. I started it actually last January and finished it in April of 20, uh, 2020. And so I was looking at my audible list because unfortunately I'm listening to the audiobook, but it's an audible original so we don't actually have any yeah. uh, audio versions of it but we do have all of the books um which are, is honestly just as good so I'm starting to reread the, the series but I'm starting on the fourth one um part of me actually <laughs> wants to go back to Air of Fire which is the third book um but it's essentially about Selena Sardothian who is an assassin who gets picked to um go into these like games to become the king's champion um and then things ensue that I can't actually tell you about because it'll ruin <laughs> the entire Spoilers series. happen. Spoiler um, alert. Uh, so I'm in the fourth one because with the fourth one a lot of things develop you get basically all of the characters we're going to see for the rest of the series um and some of my favorite characters don't show up until the third book which when I first read the third book I really didn't like it but now I want to go back just for Manon so she's a witch uh she's one of my she is my probably one of my favorite side characters um she has a Braxos this what is he a wyvern. He's a, wyvern. a wyvern a wyvern yes and it's like a flying dragon yes and so i think of um how to train your dragons yeah toothless. Like toothless like toothless <laughs> he's just the cutest little thing i'm not that little i'm probably not cute in real life but um such an amazing series again very much so woven together um but she'll do little things that while you're reading it you're like oh that's not important and then you'll find out like part of her master plan that she's been working on for months and it's just 
like one of the best ways to showcase Sarah J Mass's ability to weave in a plot line and leave you these little breadcrumbs that you won't understand until you get to that point. And I'm very much so come from a background of thriller. Like I love figuring out the ending of the story before anybody else. And I cannot figure out any of her endings. I cannot figure out where the story is going. Like I literally just sit back and enjoy it. I would 100% recommend reading this series but only if you're ready to just have your heart and soul ripped out of your body yeah and then be prepared do it again because I'm going to do it again to myself but it it is absolutely a phenomenal phenomenal read and then I'm also reading um from blood and ash as well I'm a little bit behind <laughs> Aaron. So yeah yeah no that's super cool so I think today we have discovered that we really like talking about books even more than we like talking about our jobs yeah so (laughs) I think we are actually getting close to the end of the episode but maybe we can close out with everyone kind of saying something they've got to do in their job that they were really shocked that was a part of their job um I think we've all had a couple of those in the best possible way so, Erin, uh, do you want to tell us something that you were shocked to do? Um, uh, I don't know if there was anything that I was shocked to do, but there was one thing I was, like, more pleasantly surprised, I guess, and that was, like, running of the book clubs. So, I think in the back of my mind, I was like, oh, yeah, like, I'll get to run a book club, and, like, that'll be so fun. But in reality, it's so much better than that, because, like, I get to spend my year Um, like researching, you know, what's been published and, you know, what people are reading and what people are talking about and books that are going to like make a difference and books that are like diverse and inclusive. And then I get to buy those books. That's kind of like the one big part of my job that was a, a, was a like a pleasant shock that I got to be so involved um, in the planning and the running of the book club. Uh, It's probably one of my favorite aspects of my job too. So that's my go. Yeah, that sounds like so much fun. It's great. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. What about you, Kate? Um, the crafting and design <laughs> element has been a huge plus for me because I just I I love visual art. I love um, crafting. I love all that stuff. Um, and so in creating my program. I don't want to spoil anything about my program, but there is a crafting element to it. So I get to do fun things like test out felt. And um, we have this amazing machine called the Cricut. I just learned about it when I started working here and it's incredible. Like it'll cut out shapes for you super precisely. So this week, part of my actual job that I got paid to do was testing out the Cricut machine and like doing an (laughs) iron on patch and like, yeah, so it's, um, that's been a huge plus is that like, I can really use my creative side in this job. And that's a lot of fun. That is so cool. I'm really excited to see what these like surprise crafting elements are. (laughs) Yeah. I will show you. Wow. That's awesome. Kylie, do you want to tell us one? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think the only thing that's really shocked me was, you know, uh, pandemic, making everything <laughs> virtual. <laughs> um, I mean, I never expected uh, when I started this job that I would be doing craft videos on YouTube. Um, and I think that's just been like a really um, fun surprise that we started doing The Great Create. And that yeah sometimes I get paid to just like do a craft (laughs) a couple times to get it um get it right and then film it and then I just have like four uh little like superhero crafts that I made in November for Whitcap in my house and I have a couple little tiny snowmen that I made um just lying around so I have a lot of crafts now um so that was definitely um yeah not expected but so much fun and I've really enjoyed doing that we're nothing if not adaptable yes we are totally (laughs) we are very all very go with the flow kind of people we're ready for anything we can do we'll figure it out we'll be fine yeah (laughs) yeah Shelby okay so um for me again like I don't think there's necessarily anything super surprising I think for me it was mostly um 
the ability to bring anything that you love into your job. Like it's not a very strict job. Like they want you to bring in whatever you love to turn into a program. So for me, um, I absolutely love doing makeup. And so I think back in for Canada Day, we did a Canada Day video where we all dressed up as characters. Yeah. Um, and so I dressed up as Goldilocks. And I remember one of my coworkers saw it and she's like, wow, like I loved your makeup and that like you should do a makeup program. And I was like, am I am I allowed to do a makeup program? And so I like pitched it to my boss and she was like, yeah, go for it. People signed up, people were there longer actually, because I can never actually get it done in an hour with all my talking to sit down and do makeup and talk to people about it. But even that, like, we also have a cooking channel on YouTube that Brooklyn does. It's called From Book to Table. And again, when I sat down to start my internship last year, you could not have told me that I would be cooking in my own kitchen for YouTube for work. And I would not have believed you. Like, it's just one of those things that because we're in such a creative environment, we can be who we truly are and what we love, which then like makes us love our jobs even more. Like, which is why I think a lot of us, it doesn't matter where we are in our careers. Like we are trusted to create amazing things for the public and our bosses are here for it. They're like, yes, like do anything that you think will work. We want to see it. We want to see you guys do something you love. And like, that's why nobody leaves. Like that's why people love yeah. their jobs and <laughs> nobody retires until, you know, we have somebody who's retiring after 44 years of working at our library. Like people love their jobs. And that's why we love to sit here and tell you guys about it is because it's such like a creative environment, but you're allowed to be creative in whatever manner you see as creative. It's not very closed in. There's no like box you have to conform to, to fit in here. Like they just want you to be who you are unapologetically. So, yeah, which is great. And we, there's yeah. so much freedom. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. there have been programs, like I've been trying to get like a, like a dog, like therapy dog program running for like years. Um, because there's just like not enough therapy dogs, unfortunately, but like, I've already, you know, it's just, there's so much freedom where you're like, Hey, I did the research and I think this is great. And then our superiors are like, yeah, run with it, go with it. Like they know that if you love something, obviously you're going to deliver something great because like your love is already behind it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. There's no, there's no stifling at the Whitney public library. That's not no. a thing. No, <laughs> yeah, we're absolutely. Really lucky that way. Like you want to learn D and D? Do go it. for it go for because it. look at the team section they're literally teaching you how to play Dungeons and Dragons I play Dungeons and Dragons such an amazing thing to do like if you want to learn 100% check that out because it is so much fun like I've even LARPed okay so I don't think a lot of people would assume that I'm a live action role player um, but uh -huh. we did it for our Dungeons and Dragons and let me tell you it is one of the most fun things I've done in my entire life things that I wouldn't even think of and you can find it at the library to help you learn it or explore new things like we have a seed share program coming like just anything you can possibly think of the library is going to try and offer you oh That's yeah and love. things that we have loan like that you can like loan out or borrow I should say this actually could be its own episode too because like in library school I don't know about the other the three of you but we learned about like different types of libraries that don't involve books so like one thing that we have in the library that a lot of people don't know that they can borrow is a board games, which is so cool mm -hmm. um, because those are really expensive and hotspots, Wi-Fi hotspots for a lot of people that don't have access to that. So, you know, I know TPL, Toronto Public Library has like a record collection. I know there oh, cool. are libraries that have like tool collections that you can borrow, like baking pans. Like there's the whole concept of like a human library where in a not creepy way, you can like check out a person. Um, <laughs> but the way it does is like they bring in all of these different people with incredible backgrounds. So they might bring in like a veteran or, you know, a, a dancer or, you know, someone that works in the music industry or something. And you get to like borrow them for like an hour and just like ask them questions like about their life and they'll share with you. Um, so like libraries are more than just books. Like I love that. Mm -hmm. Can we get that at our library? I want to check a person out. <laughs> that sounds so cool, Where cool? Is yeah that? we actually like we did like a mock-up of it like when I was in library school and like those who volunteered who gave their consent which is very important consent is a huge big deal um to be a person to check out and then like as students we got to like talk to them about like oh, their cool. life and what they wanted to share and like major things that they'd gone through and 
like that kind of thing. So I don't know. Libraries are cool, man. So one thing that I found really cool that I got to do that I was like surprised by is uh, I'm running a program for uh, the spring and I guess January, February, March, April, where every month we're going to be collaborating with a local brewery. So there are four in Whitby and each month on it's like in the middle on a Saturday. I'm realizing now by the time this is released, the first one will have happened two days ago, but the next (laughs) one is going to be on February 20th and it's going to be with Five Paddles Brewing Company. It's a Saturday and it's going on from one to three, so you should come, but it's going to be super cool and I was kind of surprised. I was like, oh my gosh, I get to work with a brewery and we get to like promote them and patrons can order beers and then they go on Zoom and they taste them and also no purchase required so if you just want to come hang out come on out it's 19 plus though and then we're going to be doing trivia hey everyone so it looks like we've got a wrap up um hopefully you enjoyed listening to us ramble um but what we want to do is close out just what's on uh, next on our reading list so everyone's just kind of gonna tell you or show you what they're planning on reading next and give you like a quick one offer um since i'm already talking i might as well go first my next one on the list is the Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. I am very excited for this book. She wrote the, is it like a gathering of magic? Is that what it's called? Yeah, A Darker Shade of Magic. A Darker Shade of Magic, one. thank you. Darker Shade of Magic series. So this is also fantasy, but also like a little bit sci-fi, I've been told. So, um, and I actually truly don't really know what it's about. I'm kind of leaving it as a surprise for myself when I start reading. So, um, but I'm very intrigued by the cover. <laughs> It's gorgeous. I know it's about a girl named Addie LaRue and she has a very interesting <laughs> life. I think it's similar to that like Blake Lively, Lively movie where she's sort of Age of Adeline. Age of Adeline. Yeah, yeah. I think it's kind of about, like those kind of vibes. Ooh, yeah. I love that. That's cool. Ashlyn, what are you reading next? Ooh, next I'm reading uh, The Nowhere Girls by mm. Amy Reed. It is a young adult novel and I haven't started it. I've just read the inside cover. It seems like it kind of goes through the lives and like intertwined connections between three or four girls in high school, just kind of going through their own stuff. And I love me some YA. So that's next on my my shelf. Uh, Kate? Next is Crazy Rich Asians, which I don't think I need to describe because everyone knows about Crazy Rich Asians. I loved the movie. I saw it, um, I guess, two years ago or whenever it came out. and then I started reading the book directly afterward. And then I was like, this is exactly like the movie. So I needed some space from the movie <laughs> um, because it was just like reading the movie. Um, like it. <laughs> so now I've, the I've got different. some space. The ending is different. Okay. I'm very excited. Um, but anyway, so that's next on my reading list. And I'm very excited about it. Is it part of a series? Like there are other yeah, ones. Three. Yeah, mm-hmm. I love the wedding scene in that movie. It makes me oh, cry oh, every time. Oh, it's so beautiful. <laughs> my so heart. Good. I'll go. Um, my next book is uh, it is called Loathe at First Sight by Suzanne Park. I also do not have it with me. Um, I don't really know too much about what it's about. Um, I know it's like rom com, um, and they're they work at like a video game developing company. Um, so yeah, very intrigued. Sounds really cool. Loving the concept. Um, yeah, excited to read it. Yeah, really we, we love a good enemies to lovers story. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Especially <laughs> you, Kylie. For that. Especially <laughs> me. <laughs> um, so the book I'm hopefully going to read next is To Sleep in a Sea of Stars, which is by Christopher Paolini. Paolini? I don't know how to say it. He read, uh, he wrote the Aragon series, which I didn't realize. I was reading the, the cover. He was 19 years old when he wrote that series. Um, I'm sorry. I'm in my mid twenties. I can't even conceptualize writing a book. That's just me personally. Um, but it, it's, it is, it's sci-fi. It's found in the sci-fi section. It's his first adult uh, book and um, it's her like finding a new universe and saving the, the saving earth from like this big space thing I haven't started reading it I read the the cover but I can't remember uh, but it's in space which is very outside of my wheelhouse I read some phenomenal reviews about it and I was like you know it's been a long time since I read like a space sci-fi um, 
So I'm really looking forward to it. Not only because I picked it up and it looked pretty, but then to find out he <laughs> he wrote Aragon too. Like that kind of was another thing for me that was huge. Because uh, we actually just recommended that series to one of our pages to buy for his brother for Christmas. So I was like, ooh, look at me. <laughs> Shelby, did you hear that they were a huge hit? Yeah, I asked him. I'm so happy that they were a huge hit. So <sighs> just one of those positive holiday vibes when you have patrons come back and you're like the book you recommended me let's talk about it I'm like great I've got a half hour when <laughs> <talking about it." laughs> I literally like am on the phone with patrons picking things up yeah. and I see what it's, is on their list somebody had midnight library on there and I was oh, like nice. oh my god you're gonna love it yeah <laughs> <laughs> and so we just sat so they're talking for like 20 minutes about the book and oh it makes my heart warm when people that's like want to talk about books yeah <gasps> all right we so I it? guess that's it Thank you for listening. Hopefully we will see you in a couple of weeks. Everybody stay safe and uh, happy reading. Happy reading. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.